What is going on YouTube? It is Primitive here and today I'm be bringing you yet another Digimon decklist profile. Today I have the list that I used to go 5 and 1 in the Gaia Force Gaming Winamat tournament last night, getting second place, unfortunately losing in the finals. Now, this deck, this list I took the base off of another Colorado player who was having a very dominant couple weeks in their section of Colorado, and I went and I saw this list and I really really liked it. There was just a few cards that I wasn't a big fan of, some cards that I think that needed to be put into the deck that weren't already in the deck. And so I changed it up a bit. I was playing it a bunch on my Twitch stream the past week and then was able to have a really good run last night with it um, with the new changes that I made to it so I'm going to bring it to here today but before we get into it I just want to say that if you are interested in more Digimon content if you want to see these tournament runs live or anything like that I am streaming on Twitch basically every single day so go ahead and give me a follow on Twitch the link is going to be in the description and you'll be able to get notified when I go live but with that being said let's go ahead and get on into the list. So to start off, we're going to be having our Digitama of the 4 Marimon and the 1 Koromon. Um, the 4 Demi Marimon is very important in this because you get an extra 1k DP when attacking a player. Most of the time you're going to attack a player with this uh, deck because you want to be going for multiple security checks with the list. So the extra 1k buff is actually very, very big. It's the difference from pushing a Digimon up from like 7k to 8k, which is actually really big because you can swing into other 7k Digimon like Octomon, for example. And then we have the 1 Koromon here. The Koromon is just a good 5th egg. When you swing and you have uh, Greymon in your name or Omnimon, you get to draw a card. So when we go into the multiple Greymons that are in this deck, you can go ahead and get some drop power off of this. It's not as powerful as getting the 1k DP boost because a lot of the times you want your Greymon to survive in security if possible. So getting the highest DP possible is good. But being able to get that draw is nice sometimes. And you want the 5th egg for the longer matchups like potentially uh, 3 Musketeers and Security Control because they will run you out of eggs. So you do need to run the fifth egg so I like it four and one here um, just because I like the boost a little bit more than the draw. Now getting into the Agumons, we are going to go ahead and have four of the BT6 Agumon. Now this is a card that you could probably drop down to three instead of four, just because um, you don't really go into Bond as much with this deck. It's kind of a side package. The reason I kept it at four is because I do like the ability to play ties for cheap, and if you do have it on the board and tie comes out of your security on your opponent's turn, you do still get to gain a memory, so you can potentially pass their turn or just shorten their turn, and so it's one of the few ways that you can gain memory on your opponent's turn or really affect their turn on their opponent's turn. So I like this at four this card's fine um, but you could put it down to three just because like i said you don't go into bond as much so if you aren't the biggest fan of this uh, effect you could just go down to three next up we're gonna have four of the starter deck seven agumon this card is very very good because just like uh with the demi marimon like i said we're gonna be attacking into your opponent's player a lot more than you will be attacking into their digimon so getting that 2k buff is really good um with the demi marimon and these agumons as well as the promo agumons you can go ahead and get your uh Greymons up to 8k which is very very good so i'm playing four of here this is one of the better um, Agumons here. And then with the boost going on, we also have three of the promo Agumon here. Now, this is a card you could probably play at four. Um, I only own three, so I'm only playing the three, but I haven't found too that big of a difference. Um, this Agumon kind of does the same thing as this Agumon and giving you plus 2k. The reason why this one can be better is because if you digivolve into something like a Geo Greymon or you go into your regular Greymon, you can just have them at 7k no matter what, which means you can swing over some Digimon. So this is a lot better in scenarios where you need to be defensive and swing over your opponent's suspended Digimon, but that doesn't happen as often. So um, I think three is fine. If you have four, you probably should play it at four, but like I said, I only have three, so I have just been playing it at three. It has been fine, like I said, with this uh, starter deck, Agumon being here, it feels relatively the same because a lot of the times you don't really want to attack into your opponent's Digimon anyway. And if you are, you are kind of behind. So um, just playing this at three, but you could put this at four. Like I said, you can cut one of these Agumons. You could put this to four very easily, um, and the deck will be very much the same. Next up, we're going to have three of the two-drop Agumon. Now, this card can be a little bit of a hindrance sometimes if it's the only Agumon in your hand, because when you Digivolve, you do have to pay one um, because it is a two-drop 4K, which is a bit unfortunate. But sometimes it does help because you can put your opponent at one if you really need to, or you can make it so you go down to like two, and then you can play a three drop, and then that puts your opponent at one. But for the most part, it's not the best thing to digivolve into, but we are playing it at three. I do like two drops in these type of decks. I was playing the Gomamons in my Bond of Friendship deck for a bit. Because the two drops were very powerful, you can play a couple. If you're at three, you can play two of these down to get two 4K rookies on the board, put your opponent at one. Um, the reason I didn't like the Gomamons in the Bond of Friendship as much because they weren't Gabumons. These are Agumons, so they work very well. Uh, with the deck and so i find these cards to be very good you could potentially go up to four i was testing it at four but i found myself 
um, digivolving into this way more than I really wanted to, and so I ended up going back down to three, and I've had really no problems with it outside of this couple times where this is the only Agumon that you have, um, but for the most part, this card is very powerful. Then we're gonna have two of the Agumon Expert. Now, this is a card that when I was first playing it, I was not a fan of this card at all because I was like, this card isn't really doing anything for me. Um, it felt very weak, but the more I played it, this card has been super, super key. Um, you can get a lot of resource out of this. If a Bond of Bravery is hit in security, you can go ahead and bring it back um, from the trash if you want to go into Bond, or if you are just playing against a deck where you need a lot of value, if you're playing against a slower deck, being able to play this out and being able to bring something back and recycle this card is very, very good. Good. Um, so I do like the Agumon Expert. You're definitely going to be keeping this in the list. And then to finish off the Agumons, we're having two of the BT1 Agumon. Now this is the weakest Agumon in the list. This card usually seems to just whiff. I'm not the really the biggest fan of it. Um, you could definitely take it out. Coming into EX1, I will be keeping the same Agumon lineup outside of potentially taking out the BT6 to add in the other promo and taking these out so that way you can put in the EX1 um, Agumons. So if you are looking to play EX1, you can go ahead and take out these BT1 Agumons, put in the EX1 Agumons, and you're going to be looking much, much better. If you wanted to play three, you could potentially cut this down and play this at three, or you can cut, put this down to two and play three of these. That's going to be your preference, but I'm just going to play it at two in these two slots because the search and the um, getting the value off of it is good. But with this deck, you don't really need to go to Bond and stuff that much. So um, you're mostly looking for cards that give you Greymon or trying to just draw into your Greymons. And so it's not the biggest card. It's just good for value. So the EX1 is just going to be a little bit better for that value. Now, getting into the champions, we are going to have four of the promo Greymon, the star of the deck. Now, this card is absolutely insane. When you have an Agumon and its source, you do get security attack plus one. So you're already swinging two checks. We have the promo Agumon and the starter deck Agumon, which are going to be able to give this plus 2k when you're attacking into your opponent's security. And then we have the Demi Marimon to give it plus 1k and that's the big reason why you can put this up to 8k swing for two checks now this is the main card uh this is the card that kind of um the two one of the two cards that really make this deck run we'll get to the second card later but this card is very very powerful being able to swing multiple checks on a champion especially when combined with lightning joust um to be able to swing more checks at a bigger pace this card is very 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 powerful can really swing games early being able to get two or three checks early in the game uh, threaten KOs on just turn two um, and be having to have your opponent answer this going into turn three or they could just lose so this card is very 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 powerful next up we're gonna have the four agunimon now this is just a finisher um we are playing gravity crush in this list so there are times where you go down to zero and you can gravity crush up to two play the agunimon we are playing six tamers and so the four agunimons is a pretty good ratio because you're a lot of times when you have the agunimon you're gonna have the tamer there are times where i have a bunch of tamers and no agunimon so if i could run more than four agunimons i probably would but the burning graymons aren't as good so i opted out to not playing them. We're just playing the four Goonimons as the hybrids, but this is a really good finisher. Um, sometimes you do have to Digivolve on top of it just to cycle, which is a bit unfortunate, but it's not the worst card to cycle onto because it's just a 2k. Um, and you can go ahead and still get boosts from attacking the face with the starter deck seven um, Agumon as well as the Demi Marimon. So you can get some checks off of this. It is a decent card, but this is just kind of a finisher card. Then to finish off the champions, we're going to be having three of the Geo Greymon. I was testing the four Geo Greymon for a bit, but I found I was having them in my hand way too much um, and I was kind of just getting flooded by Geo Greymons and Agunimons when I didn't really necessarily want them in my hand as much and so instead of playing 4 for 4 I just decided to go 4 for 3 um, the 3 Geo Greymons are nice they are a good hard play sometimes to clear off the board obviously if they come out of security it's very powerful because you can delete um, something that swung into it if it's at 5k or less and then the effect deletes something that's 4k or less and so you can get 2 Digimon off the board off of one of your opponent's security checks while getting a uh, threat on the board so this card is very good I like it at three. Um, like I said, I had tried it at four. I wasn't the biggest fan, so I probably wouldn't go back up to four. And I don't think I would cut down to two. I was playing two, four a little bit. Um, and then I wasn't seeing Geo Greymon enough. And so I found three to be the sweet, so sweet spot for me. But this is going to be the champion list here. Now we are playing the three Bond of Bravery. Um, Bond is just a kind of side package here. So we don't need to play four. Most even full Bond of Bravery lists don't even play four Bonds. Just because you don't really need to play four Bonds. They can clunk really bad. There were multiple games... Uh, this past week where I was playing where I would have two, three of these Bond of Braveries in hand and not really be able to play them. In one of my sets in the Gaia Force Gaming Tournament, I did have a set where I was going to be having 
two, I think, or maybe three, all three of them in my hand. And so I had to Digivolve on top of one of my Agumons um, and trash my tops to security, even though my opponent didn't have any Digimon on board, just because I had only Bond of Braveries and option cards in hand and I needed to try to cycle. So I essentially just traded my two security for their two security to have my Digimon die at the end of the turn, which isn't great, but I didn't really have any other options. So this card can clunk. It is kind of a side package. You're mostly looking to play like Greymon Turbo here, but um, we are still just playing three. It's good consistency. Three is a good consistency card, but four is just way, way too much. Now getting into the Tamers, we're going to have the four tie. Nothing to really say here. This is staple. We are playing a bunch of Greymons and Agumons, so we're going to be able to gain one, draw one when promoting. We are also playing the Bond, so we can go up into Bond. Um, it's just a very staple key card of the deck. It's kind of the glue that puts everything together and gives you a lot of the advantage that you need. So we're going to be playing this at four, and then we're going to be playing two Marcus. It's a good memory Tamer. Um, you have the ability to tap this to gain a memory when you swing with a Greymon, so you can get some memory gain. Um, but for the most part, it's just a memory Tamer, so you can always be at three plus the tie and then you can go ahead and a Goonimon on top of these or just gain extra uh, value when you attack with your Greymons. So we're just going four and two here with the six Tamers. The four Goonimons does work really well so I was happy with this ratio of Tamers. Now getting into the option cards we are going to be playing the four Atomic Blaster. This card is just very very powerful. Um, being able to clear up to 8k worth DP on the board is very powerful. That can clear up to three or four Digimon sometimes if your opponent's really wide on 2k Digimon and so this is very good. It also comes out of security and blows up a bunch of Digimon. This is a very good card at four. It's good consistency. It gives your security a lot of power um, on top of the already good security that you have. And then it's also just a decent card to play to be able to clear things off a of board, give you the time that you need so that you can build up to your Greymons or get your ties out so you can go into Bond um, and stuff like that. So we are playing this at four. And then we are playing my new favorite Digimon card, Lightning Joust as a four of. This is the other kind of key card to the deck. Being able to uh, give plus 2k DP to one of your Digimon, and then if you have less than or equal to security to your opponent, that Digimon also gets security attack plus one. So then you're able to stack this with the promo Greymon that we saw earlier that already has security attack plus one to give it even more checks. Um, there were multiple times. Um, on my stream this past week where I was able to play three lightning jousts onto a Greymon, giving it security attack plus four, and then being able to swing for five checks at 14k, um, and then be able to go in with something on board or go in with an Agunimon and essentially get an OTK. Um, you don't always have to do this. Sometimes just playing one lightning joust or two lightning joust is really, really good because you're able to get multiple checks. You can put this on top of Geo Greymons or Agunimons to make it so instead of them just being a 5k swinging one check, you can swing uh, two, three checks at like nine, 10 k this card is absolutely insane um this was the card that really brought my attention to agubon i hadn't really seen any lists playing the lightning joust package but when i saw it played i saw thought it was absolutely insane um i went ahead and maxed it out up to four the list that i took was playing it at three i believe but i went up to four this card's insane this is kind of what makes this deck as good as i think it is um just the fact that you're able to swing in so early with lightning joust or be able to make really big comebacks by being able to stock lightning joust in your hand and then if your opponent goes up to four or five security just going for really big turns um where you go for three four lightning Lightning Joust in one turn, clear out all their security and go for game. And so Lightning Joust is just an absolutely fantastic, very, very powerful card. Then we're going to be playing two Gravity Crush. This was a card that I put in on my own list um, that wasn't playing in the original list. I just felt that you a lot of times needed that extra memory. The Marcus and the Ties are uh, good, but they aren't as consistent and aren't um, on being able to have on the board. Sometimes you need more memory than you can get. Or if you're just at like one tie and no Marcus on board, then you're going to maybe two a turn and you could need more than that. So I found the Gravity Crush crushes to be really good um also able to just make it so you can go into like bond clear out all the security gravity crush up to two and go into a goonimon like i said earlier which has been very good uh game ender kind of reminds me of the bond of friendship how you'll go ahead and swing multiple checks and then go into the lobomon which is kind of one of the reasons that i wanted to do this but the gravity crush has been very very powerful um it's come in clutch in a lot of situations it is a bad security check obviously because nothing's going to happen your opponent doesn't get punished in any way but it is still a very very powerful card um giving this deck a lot more options just by being able to have the two memory i was playing it at two and considering going up to three in ex1 just because of the ice wall matchup but i think there's uh at three it might become a little too clunky and dead sometimes because there's a lot of times where if you have both of these in hand um one of them or sometimes both of them are just dead and so going up to three might not be the best so we're just gonna be playing two right now and then to finish it off we're playing one gaia force and one delicate plan gaia force is here just as kind of a tech for sukuyamon um if you're playing against security control your opponent's playing sukuyamon you can go ahead and just gaia force it down um, other than that you don't really need it that much unless this card is in security it feels really bad to have um, when it's in your hand i pretty much 
never really played it. There was multiple times where I drew the one Gaia Force in hand, and I never really played it, so being able to play more and have more of them in my hand didn't really feel that appealing. But the one is nice versus security control matchup. If you do hit in security, you can pop things like Bond of Friendships or whatever, which is really nice, and that's really good. And then we have the one Delicate Plan. The one Delicate Plan is a card that could technically be cut because um, you kind of really need to be going for big checks with the Lightning Jaws for it to really be useful. But I have had times where I was playing against, like, uh, let's say the Agubon Mirror Match or the Gabubon Mirror Match where they had one security left. I could Delicate Plan, swing for the one check, and then that way I can't hit things like Hammer Spark or Atomic Blaster or Gaia Force um, and have them be able to clear my board and win the game. But the Delicate Plan is just a little bit of versatile. You could change it if you're not the biggest fan of it, uh, just because it is a one of, but... It is a card that did come in clutch sometimes. Being able to lightning joust two or three times, go up to four or five checks, and then delicate planet um, was very helpful. Being able to go into bond of bravery and then go into lightning joust delicate plan was something I've done multiple multiple times. So you'd be able to swing, trash the top security, then do two, three, four checks with delicate plan at like 16k, 17k, or whatever you're at because of the boosts. And that's very good because there's it's really hard for your opponent to stop that if it's possible for them to stop that, um, which I'm not sure that it is, uh, especially with the delicate plan. And so... Um, that is the option card lineup for the deck, and that is going to be the full 55 there. Now, if you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe because I'm going to be bringing you a bunch of content, especially over on Twitch as well. Um, I will be uploading here on YouTube still consistently. Um, I will be keeping my four to five uploads a week, but I have been streaming pretty much every single day on Twitch. So if you do want more content, be sure to follow me on Twitch. But with that being said, I will catch you all tomorrow for some more matches from tonight's local. I hope you all have a great day. Peace out.